Hey guys, it's uh, been a minute. How you been? I've been pretty all right. And um, I guess just for a brief kind of like catch up, I I've wanted to do videos for a dang minute, but I didn't want to put anything out that I didn't feel comfortable with or confident in. You know, you put out a lot of bullshit, and I I, I mean, sure I have bad videos, but I'd like to adhere to a certain standard. And I didn't feel my videos were, uh, the ones that I thought up were, were, you know, married, whatever, were up to snuff. So, that being said, we're actually, uh, spectating a snake tour game. This is the last RU game in the, uh, phase one of RU Snake Tour, Soul Gazer versus Silent Verse. Um, ideally, I'd like to get my own games up, um, because I've been participating, and... Not since like two or three SPLs ago, when I promised myself I would upload my own games and never got to it, have I been able to really been go be good about that? So hopefully I can, you know, get on that train early this time around. But I digress. Um, last game in the series, Silent Verse is, I believe, 1-1 one one this uh, round, whereas Soul Gazer, I believe, is 2-0. Oh. Um, and ooh... That's absolutely savage right off the bat. So, um, sorry. So, for some context, interesting to see double ground from Silent Verse, but this is mostly just like good stuff. So this is uh, everything you would probably expect it to do, given any kind of basic RU knowledge. Um, there was a chance that this was going to be Scarf Gone, but given that it is now showing DD, you can be led to believe that that is a Scarf Shaman, a. Uh, it could either be Banded or a uh, Lefty's Tech type Escavler. It could be Rust Talk as well. But uh, generally, you don't see that on a team like this because it's kind of you know, pacing itself up a little bit extra. Um, and then you've got Standard Bulky Crest, I imagine. Another, you know, Tank Neo Queen. And uh, Guts Facade Machamp. And Soul Gear, I believe, is using a team. That was used very much earlier, even today, I think. I think this is the team Chill Shadow used against... Is it the team that Chill Shadow used? Gracious, I feel like someone used this exact same team, but maybe it has some slight variations. It's uh, it's rather standard all the same, but I believe it was a Chill Shadow team. Um, ooh, Chill Shadow versus Mero, I believe, is where this is from. Or it's... Just monstrously close. I can't rightly recall. I, I'm sorry, guys. Um, <coughs> but it also is pretty much what you would expect. I think that um, really the only distinction we're getting is, you know, from that damage right off the bat, this is a thick fat curse Snorlax, presumed uh, Rust Talk 1 attack, which is fine. Uh, I've always had a little bit of an... I've been a little bit at odds with that because it means that you're... Uh, your ghost check is Sharpedo, and, you know, bring that in in the mid-game in any capacity is always kind of eh. Um, it's kind of just a shortcoming of building that I've seen pop, er, popping up now and then. So we do see the leftovers on these scavengers, so that would be indicative of either... Okay, so there's the protect set. That was what I was expecting. So it's probably just going to be... Uh, actually, people have been opting out of freaking... Uh... What's the name of it? Pursuit. Quite a lot on this. Um, in favor of just, you know, an AOA with Megahorn, Iron Head, and Knockoff. And if this... Um, there have been circulating variations of this that run uh, Toxic Zatu. And are we going to see that? We are not. Okay. So... It's not first doubling. I'm not sure what Nido Queen is going for there. I mean, if he's trying to get the rocks up, that's all well and good. But, um... Yeah, his play is almost definitely Snorlax because when it reveals leftover, it is indicative or it is indicating, especially with that fucking nine percent. It is careful. It is going to be a rust talking set. So uh, unless he's you know trying to sneak in his rocks here, try to get them somewhere because Queen, it's not bad. It's, you know, Queen's almost never bad in any given matchup, but it's not like objectively great. It's not breaking through anything super well, nor is it getting Stealth Rock up extremely well, so he's just trying to sneak it in on this kind of, you know, middle ground thing, because Snorlax, it's not going to sweep this team yet. It's got, you know, the Escavalier, 
to uh, you know force the rest, and it's got the Machamp to scare it out. Uh, In-game Lax still can be threatening, but at this point, it is not going to be overbearing in any strong way. Um, and we do see Frustration doing nothing to the crest, and I guess he's just going to Toxic here and force the rest, bring in the, uh, the Machamp. Otherwise, this sequence really is totally useless, but, um, honestly, SG is kind of at so much liberty in this, because he can just stay in if he wants, or he can go into Zatu to try to, uh, bounce a Toxic. I don't feel like that was necessary. Honestly, I think that the, uh, better play was just throwing out another frustration, because SV is very much forced to, uh, you know, make some moves in this situation. I don't know what these doubles are accomplishing for him specifically, though. I mean, um, oh, wow, that's nifty. All right, so um, I was thinking initially that he was just kind of uh, foregoing hazard control outright. Uh, instead, he is opting for this Drake uh, defog variation. It is definitely not all bad. I mean, obviously, on teams like this, you can slap a Z move on one of these bulky dudes just to, uh, you know, stomach and knock a little better, retaliate against a certain thing. In this case, you know, it's pretty decent on picking off the chestnut because even if it did, only 80 with the crit, uh, which I haven't been addressing, but it's untimely. What? All right, that's just crazy because, um, that is the most bargain bin ass fly on ever. It's going to get popped off by Durant here. Or, I mean, you know, it should. For all intents and purposes, I don't think that SG should be, you know, fucking around with that. And nothing on Silent Versus Team offers any really threatening counterplay for him just, you know, in theory, locking an Iron Head. I'm not sure. There are, you know, plenty of Durant sets that it could be. I think that it... I think that I would like Scarf on a team like this. Um, just because, again, I don't like relying on Sharpedo to revenge kill. I feel like it should be brought in as little as possible if you can help it, but um, yeah, Durant's definitely coming in and it obviously picks it off, uh, and the chip on it, ideally you can avoid the miss here, because um, Durant HP is good for, you know, eating maybe like one Earth Power from a Shaman, or, you know, maybe a couple Psychics from Cress. alright, so he does take it, locks Iron Head, as I said, well, you know, we are assuming he locks Iron Head, uh, which is threatening, because he really doesn't have anything great for it. If this is banded Durant, it could just actually kill this if it wanted to go for it, but SG really has no reason to. He can just go lax. Again, um, like, the best S, uh, SV can do with that is, you know, make that double to Machamp, and that's super aggressive, A, and B, SG has the liberty to just fodder off his chestnut there, you know, forces him to presumably go, well, he goes for Facade, which is, a, you know, a good play, I think. He can do that. Oh, wow, but he just goes for the Earth Power. Yeah, I I feel SG, or, uh, so, this is awful because F -E, or S -Z -S -V and SG, both of them with names that just, ugh. All right, you know, I'll call him Soul Gage, I'll call that SV, because that's more, uh, it is not. That's just what I decided upon. He is on this side of the battle. I'm doing that. <laughs> okay. So he's just clanning on him right now. But um, I guess that is, if anything, reflective of just how much he is in the driver's seat with this game. Like, SV needs to... Uh, I said I wasn't going to do that. Silent first. No, I did say I was going to do that. Gosh darn it. Guys! Off my meds. I'm not. Um, just how in the driver's seat is. But, um... Given that's how SV decided to play it, I'm pretty sure that Soul Gazer is set to just, like, set up a curse and then throw a frustration into whatever. Okay, he decides to keep going for that. I am... Is this really just, uh, like, a AOA set? I feel like he wants to set up the curse to, you know, push the issue. Um... <coughs> hmm. Ooh, interesting double. Um, doesn't go for the recovery. I'm not sure why he wouldn't. Um, maybe he doesn't have it. Maybe he's um, 
Because I know that there has been a spike in Zatu usage. I don't think it's a great Pokemon. I think it's a little cheesy, even though I used it myself. Versus uh, Male, I think that it's just so-so, because it only super effectively stops uh, Registeel. And anything like a... Uh, like a Roselia, a Nidoqueen, any of the rock stealth rockers, um, they all struggle to, uh, you know, Zatu struggles against all of those Pokemon. So it's just an interesting choice right now. I think, you know, it can run Spadef to uh, sort of play into Roselia, or Roserade rather, a little bit better, but most Roserade that run spikes are running much more offensive variations than you would uh, hope for with a set like that. So it's just, I don't know, it's so-so, but it's good on teams such as this. I think that these are good environments for it because it um, knows its pace well. It's not going to, you know, fall to the shortcomings of, you know, relying on such a loose hazard control method because it can just, you know, run itself a little faster. It can push through on Steam with that, um, but... Yeah, Shaman Scarf, uh, that is indicative of Scarf. He doesn't have a Z move to, you know, potentially Bloom Doom this and fuck it over. I don't agree with him. Uh, well, unless of. I mean, the way he's playing it would suggest that he's not Rest, which is very odd to me. I feel like this would almost certainly be a Curse variant. And, I mean, if not Rest, then what is he using? Curse, you know, three attacks, Curse Protect. I mean, it's. It's alright, but I feel like it doesn't substantiate like Snorlax's biggest niche in most situations, especially without, you know, any kind of beller. Usually you'd get like a Deancey on stuff like that. But I digress. Um, this is, I think, a superpower turn. Um, unless his... He, he has a superpower turn, because he needs his... He doesn't need his crest, honestly. He needs his Seattle. Um But I don't think he's gonna make that read in the same time. I feel like he will uh simply make the safe Escavalier play, in which case, yeah, superpower. Um Oh, but it is in fact Home Claws. Okay. So that was what the initial variant was, and it, you know, circles back to me being somewhat dissatisfied with um that on the team. But yeah, no, this is good in that it totally doesn't get threatened by this uh, Escavalier all. It's not to it KO'd. So it's got some liberty in its play. The shortcoming, of course, being that if it takes a hit, it is in Shaman Earth Power range, which isn't that bad, honestly. Um, but okay, he does go for the Black Hole Apocalypse, which does in fact kill. Strong-ass move. Um, I guess SV is going for what you could interpret as a bluff. Scarf HP Fire is almost not a set however on a team like this that's just so bizarrely durant weak it's like incredibly slow um it's a possibility and i think that um you know soul Gazer has to honor that bluff to some extent he doesn't really feel pressured by anything like okay so silent verse does make that double and does he honor it okay he does goes to the lax he gets his Flame Orb off. I feel like this is kind of too little too late, though, if I'm being real with y'all. Um, depending on his crest spread, and I would... Hmm. Well, most people are going for a special Sharpedo, which, at this point, it's not going to be able to KO, but um, a physical Sharpedo, depending on the crest spread, can uh, end game from these conditions. So it's possible that XG just goes for the, you know, sack here, but he's going to go to Queen. I think that SV will obviously go for, yes, the facade, um, because it does KO Snorlax from 61 most of the time. And uh, Durant, of course, is a little too valuable to be played like that. So he's going to pick that off. Mew Queen, obviously the least valuable member. Totally val or totally valid sack, and I figure he just goes torpedo because um, I mean yeah this is part of the uh, shortcoming special like I reckon uh, a lot of people 
Lind special pedo as the best set, and I obviously think that there's validity in that. I've used it a bunch myself, but you have to consider that in spite of those, you know, big conditions, those, uh, you know, hitting the Pangora for extra, the uh, punching through Chestnut better, you really aren't, uh, I don't know, you just aren't getting the push through, like, a lot of these neutral targets that you would hope for. And, uh, I think it shows a lot more than you would expect. Um, Hydro Pump versus Waterfall is actually doing very similar damage, neg negligibly so in the case of certain neutral targets, and especially when you start, you know, dealing with the coverage, like, your Dark Pulse versus a Cress is doing Jack Bupkis. I don't think that's a phrase. Oh, he does have HP Fire. Interesting. So, um, yeah, that's pretty fascinating. I mean, it's almost not a set at all. Um, okay, and he has special, and that's why he decided not to go for it. Alright, um, but you're gonna see just how fucking flimsy this is. That's almost half. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like... Yeah, okay, so it is Rust Talk Lax. Okay, so... That's kind of a weird way he played it. I feel like his Lax could have, you know, sat in on the Shaman and, you know, rested there and then went to Satu for the sack, but, um... There's a chance he was expecting a double. There was a chance that he wanted to keep the Lax awake for this situation. I'm not sure, but, um... This is kind of very indicative of where the metagame is at right now. And, uh, yeah, I have to say I'm not a huge fan of SV's team. I mean, you know, on paper it looks okay, but there's just so many... <sighs> I feel like, hmm, what's the phrase for it? Concessions made. It's just like, you know, this is mashing of good stuffs, and mashing of good stuffs usually works, but it only gets you so far, and it kind of shows on teams like this where it's like, this is just a smattering of some of the good Pokemon in the meta. I hope that they, uh, you know, get me the game. But against a team like this, it has much more of a concentrated goal. Like, this is, you know, as obvious as it is, Sharpedo Spike Stack, it's, you know, tried and true. It is going to work for you most of the time. So, I don't know. It's a weird one, but, uh, yeah, that's going to do it. I am hopefully going to uh, start uploading some of my own games, though. Unfortunately, my first one versus uh, Mail is probably you know, lost to time itself because uh, replays were down. But I'll touch upon that and I uh, get to that. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was all right and, uh, you know, also served as a decent update of sorts. And, uh, you know, catch you on the flippy flip.